What's going on everyone? The stock market craziness has only continued as around 71% of stocks in the S&P 500 finished in the green today and the S&P 500 made a brand new all-time high. This is happening as uh, obviously there's still a whole lot of craziness going on with GameStop, AMC, and those short squeeze related stocks. So of course we're going to do a recap on those, but there was also some pretty interesting news with uh, the Oracle of Omaha. Warren Buffett and uh, he finally revealed the stock he's been uh, secretly buying over the past couple of quarters so we have a lot to talk about today and stick with us all the way until the end but with that being said Tom let's jump right into it yeah Mike the market was on fire this morning and we saw some great reactions out of the overall market with the CPI data and it actually sent the spy up to new highs before the market even opened it actually ran up to like 526.75 right around there then the market opened a chop for a bit before running up to even more new highs and hitting 530 around market close today like it was such a good day Mike and the spy continued to put pressure on that high of day pretty much all day long I'll I'll be honest honest, Mike, it kind of blew me out of the water how much it was uh, moving up intraday. Like stocks like Meta, Google, and others were actually looking pretty fire as well. Uh, you know, we saw a lot of good moves out of the larger tech stocks. And going back to the heat map one more time, there was just so much green today. So I know everybody's kind of saying like, why was this? And the main reason is the inflation data this morning. The CPI report came out and showed that inflation is easing a bit. And we can see that right here on the chart. The previous reading from March was 3.5 percent and this is on the year over year inflation rate by the way and on this one it came in at 3.4 so it is showing a slight drop there and we saw core down a little bit as well so overall mike this was a pretty good inflation report here in the market obviously loved it quite a bit it's always good to see inflation easing no doubt and it's like if we're being realistic it's not like inflation has like totally calmed down like it's more so just in line with market expectations and that's really all you need to see a move like we saw today you don't necessarily need like jaw drop draw dropping great mind-blowing economic data to see the stock market move up in a big way you just need you know good enough data to please investors and move the market higher it's kind of like what's uh, sometimes with like stock earnings reports, you can have like, you know, good news and you can have a stock fall and you can have okay news and you can have a stock uh, explode to the upside, but it all comes down to expectations and the inflation data today uh, was right around market uh, expectations, which was great to see. So while the market is running up in a pretty big way, Tom, uh, a couple stocks that aren't are uh, GameStop and AMC. So as we know, they had a bunch of hype earlier in the week and they have started to drop quite a bit. Here's the thing with them. We all know that these stocks are some of the craziest stocks in the market. And the fact that they are down quite a bit from their recent highs, uh, obviously is not a good thing for like the short squeeze players. What's worth noting with stocks like these ones is the more pressure they put on their highs and the more explosive they run up, the better the setups become. But just like we saw when GameStop and AMC originally ran up in January and February of 2021 and then just continued to fade lower for the next couple of years, um, you need that sustained hype and momentum and pressure on highs in order to see the stock continue. So these stocks are at a very uh, pivotal point right now because if they do want to run, they have to start putting more pressure on their highs or else it's just gonna like be like a slow slow fade lower which is exactly what uh, you don't want to see in a situation like this yeah and I think that on the way down like we will get to a point of finding like a good balance or like a good bottom here on GameStop and AMC I do think that there will be some chop you know I, I don't think that the uh that the volatility necessarily is over, like it's just going to be straight down. And I think it could see like a lot of chop here in the short term, but I'm with you, Mike. Like that's definitely what you don't want to see. You don't want to see this start to like get down towards like $20 or anything like that. That would start to be pretty bad. Uh, heading into tomorrow, you know, there's a crucial support right around $32 and this like $35 mark. There's been a lot of bounces off of this area over the past week or so. So you're right. This is a very pivotal point for these stocks here in the short term. And I don't know. 
know, Mike, will the uh, will the apes and like will Wall Street bets be able to get this one back up? Right. It's a pretty uh, insane situation. And I don't know that they can get it back up this time. I think a lot of the people who traded this in the past have kind of uh, left it behind here. I know a lot of people have been waking back up lately, but uh, I think it's uh, I think a lot of people learned their lessons last time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all a game of momentum at this point. It's like if the stocks can start putting serious pressure on their highs, then there's a chance that they can continue higher. But at the same time, they need that momentum to come in or else they're going to have a, a big problem on their hands. And another thing I want to talk about, because I've seen so many people get burned uh, in these situations in the past, so I'm hopefully, I'm trying to avoid that uh, this time with everyone, is that when you have super crazy and volatile stocks like GameStop and AMC, obviously their options... Uh, get pretty expensive, right? Like if you look at GameStop right now, it's around like $39 a share and it's moving in after hours. But the main point is that you can go to the options chain and you can see options that cost anywhere from, you could say $700 to $100, right? And someone might say, okay, a $400 option isn't the most expensive option I've ever seen. But you have to keep in mind, it's all relative. The options on these stocks right now are ridiculously expensive. So it's like, you have to be very careful because just like we saw in January of 2021 and February of 2021, these stocks fell down, but a handful of their put options also fell. So basically be very, very, very careful trading options on these stocks right now because I don't want to see people get burned. So let's trade smart and, uh, you know, just let's, let's trade smart and be careful trading the options. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, hopefully a lot of people heed the warning. And Mike, I'm glad that you said it because, you know, it really does need to be said, I think, by more people. Of course, it's always fun, right? Like, it's really fun to get all hyped up about these stocks and to, you know, talk about the potential to make, you know, to turn $300 into like 20 grand or something crazy, right? But at the end of the day, uh, that is a very rare situation. And for that to really happen, we're going to have to see a, a lot of weird things happen here in the short term with these stocks. And who knows, maybe it can happen. But be very, very careful trying to trade these. Like Mike said, even the puts lost on the way down in the past. But uh, they are interesting, Mike, nonetheless. And I think that uh, a lot of traders out there are definitely going to save some money, hopefully, based off of what you said. So uh, ho hopefully that's the case. If you guys have been saving money from stuff like this, let us know in the comments because, uh, you know, it definitely is always good when we see comments like that, Mike. You know, it always puts a smile on my face whenever people start stop getting too risky on trades. There we go. All right. So as we look at the market right now, like we talked about a couple minutes ago, we are at all time highs. Tom, there's not too much resistance overhead because it's kind of like no man's land. We've never been at this spot before. So going into tomorrow, what would you say are like the key levels to watch in terms of like upside levels, but also downside levels? Yeah, so really the big thing I think is, especially with upside levels, is going to be looking at whole dollar marks, kind of like we saw at the end of the day today. 530 on SPY is going to be pretty big. It's going to be hard to tell, and that's actually where Bookmap can come in. You know, we'll actually look at this tomorrow if you guys want to look at it a little bit. Make sure you check out Stocked Up Live on the uh, Stocked Up Live YouTube channel. I will be live doing Bookmaps and other stuff there in the morning if you want to check it out. But uh, looking at 530 for tomorrow, that's going to be the main area I'm watching. Of course, that's right where we hit before the market closed, and it's a whole dollar level. So I'm going to use that as a good short-term resistance for like a possible breakout. As far as levels to the downside, there was a lot of chop around the end of the day, around like 528 to 528.50. I'm definitely going to watch that little 50 cent range there. Uh, if we end up falling through there, I'll look for a bigger push down towards like 526.80. That was the pre-market high today. There was a few bounces and a breakout there this morning. So uh, those are the levels I'm really watching for tomorrow in the short term, Mike. Hopefully the SPY can break 530 and we can continue to see that good momentum like we did today. Today was almost like textbook as far as like uh, pressure on the high of day. Uh, there were these times where it would go choppy for like five five minutes to 30 minutes, but uh, the breakouts out of those were pretty significant. All righty. Well, good stuff there. So let's start to talk about uh, what uh, Worry Buffet has been doing over these uh, past couple of quarters. So as we all know, the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, is one of the best investors of all time. And he has been like secretly buying this stock over the past three quarters and nobody knew what stock it was. Until today. So it's ticker symbol CB. Uh, it's called Chubb. And uh, basically it's an insurance company. And the stock is moving to the upside in a good way in after hours. But it's like when you look at the 
if you look when you look at the stock right now, um, it's certainly not the best time to be buying in, especially considering Buffett has been buying in over the past three quarters. But the stock is moving in a significant way in after hours. So basically, in a situation like this, when you have news that Warren Buffett has been buying the stock, that can bring in a lot of short-term hype to the stock. So if you are looking at it in like a short-term way, there is opportunity to like ride that short-term hype, momentum, and positive news and, you know, profit off of the shift of momentum. However, if you are looking to buy into this stock now after it has already been released that, you know, Buffett has been buying over the past couple quarters and you're looking to hold for like, you know, the next three years, that might not be the best decision. And if you're looking to follow Buffett, you know, to that extent, you might as well just buy Berkshire shares. But I just wanted to cover this uh, situation because I want to, you know, hopefully avoid some people kind of falling into the hype of like buying the news. Uh, but at the same time, there are some short-term opportunities with it. You just have to trade it in like a smart way and understand the game you're playing. It's always interesting whenever the Oracle of Omaha buys a stock, right? Everybody always gets into it. It always becomes hyped up in the short term. And this is just another one that's pretty interesting here. You know, CB, Chubb, I know a lot of people have been looking at buying it since the news came out. I've seen a lot in Discord and et cetera. I will say, Mike, I'm definitely with you here. Heed the warning on this one. Uh, it's up quite a bit right now. Of course, there might be some short-term volatility. Maybe it'll run up to like 276, 280, something like that. Is it really worth it in the short term I don't know you know it's not like the fastest moving stock 280 would only put it up like 5% from where it is now uh, maybe 295 300 would be like 12% I don't know ask yourself is that worth it whenever it's up so high the thing that I'm worried about Mike is like he's been buying it for a few quarters now you know he owns this thing like maybe around 200 or 208 or 210 now the stock's at 252 and in after hours it's at 266 so i don't know you know he's already up on it quite a bit i would say and yeah it's just it's not one that i don't think i would follow here uh you know and it, there are times though where i see him buy stocks that are lower and i love that right but this one just doesn't seem like the best considering how long it's been yeah, and it all depends on how you want to play it. Like, if you're looking for, like, a short-term scalp to ride that momentum, there's nothing wrong with playing it in the short term. But just, again, understand the game you're playing. And if you want to follow Buffett specifically, uh, just trading Berkshire shares would... Uh, you know, do what would, would be much better and much less stressful. But good stuff there, Tom. But uh, what is on uh, the schedule for tomorrow in terms of economic data and earnings? Yeah, so the economic data, there's not too much. There is some initial jobless claims, building permits in the morning. As we go through the day, there are some Fed speakers like Barr, Harker, Messer, and Bostic later on in the day. Uh, but I think the big thing tomorrow, Mike, is going to be the earnings. You know, everybody's been watching the China stocks in the short term. And tomorrow we're going to have Baidu and JD report before the market opens. Those are going to be some pretty big reports. Baba reported earlier in the week, and it was not the best report as we looked at last night, at least not the best reaction anyway. So I'm definitely going to be watching these two China stocks. If they report well, that would be awesome, right? It would bring the China stocks back. Uh, Walmart's also reporting, which is my favorite of the week. I think that'll be pretty big for uh, consumer data. All right. Well, sounds good there. And uh, I think we're all set for some setups and predictions for tomorrow. A stock I'm still watching very closely is KTOS. There was a recent big money play with this one, and it is just uh, very slowly marching higher. It increased by like 1.25% today. And I talked about it in yesterday's video, and we've been talking about it a handful of times over the past couple of weeks. But uh, I'm definitely uh, still uh, pretty bullish on this one. I really like the risk reward in the short Short term, the big money play expires on July 19th of 2024. So to be honest, it can take that long for the stock to move. But uh, in terms of like a swing trade that can last a couple weeks to a couple months, I think the risk reward is still there. I like how the big money play is now in the money because it's the 20 strike. Um, and we do have a decent amount of resistance overhead, uh, more specifically right around that like $21 and 50 cent area. So in a perfect world, I would love to see the stock break above that resistance and continue to march higher but in a not so perfect world uh, the stock will uh, you know end up failing to break that and might even come back lower to like maybe like $19 a share or so if it got back down to 19 I would be like a little bit more concerned about the stock but for right for right now it's just like one of those uh, slower moving more consistent style setups. 
Yeah, and this has been a pretty big channel that this stock has been in. I would not be surprised if it came up to retest the top, maybe even break. You know, this is going to be the third test now of that resistance, at least on the daily here. So I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on it, Mike. That was a very interesting big money play, and it's cool to see it doing so well. Uh, with my first play, I'm looking at Carnival Cruise Lines. They're starting to come up pretty well in the short term off of support. I know some of the airlines have had some pretty good movement lately as well. So I'm definitely watching CCL back to the upside here. I love that action today and i'm going to look at a breakout possibly above like that double top area right around 15 dollars. so uh, if we do see a breakout there i'll go ahead and look at some good potential uh movement to the upside but yeah it's just it's more of a short-term play for me i will say though uh the dip is interesting on the daily on the ccl right now like i would not be surprised if the cruise lines did better over the summer all right, there we go. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely right now is NEM. So this is one of the uh, biggest gold mining companies out there. Uh, and basically, we have been seeing gold and silver prices uh, climbing in a pretty strong way. Gold prices are right around their record high, while silver prices are starting to move up in a you know, pretty good way, which is always good to see. But either way, I'm watching gold mining stocks like NEM, like uh, GOLD, like GDX, which is an ETF of a bunch of gold mining stocks uh, in a bullish way in the short term, um, especially given the way that gold and silver prices have been moving. But uh, either way, the price action has been really good. And with NEM specifically, we're getting very close to that resistance right around that like $44 area. I would love to see a break above this and then continuation higher. But uh, one thing worth noting with this one is that, you know, it's a gold mining company. It's not some hyped up AI crypto short squeeze stock that's going to, you know, rise or fall by 20% in a day. It, you know, usually moves in a little bit more of like a slower way, but that's okay because the price action is also, you know, more consistent as well. But either way, NEM is on the uh, upside uh, watch for me. Oh my gosh, Mike. NEM has been insane. A lot of these plays with gold and silver have been nuts too. I mean, SLV. Oh my gosh. Look at that chart. Like that's amazing. It's running up to retest 27 now. That was such a great move today. And the big money just entered those 27 calls a little while ago. I still think, Mike, I don't know I don't know who did this with the 27 calls, but they need to be investigated, I think, because <laughs> uh, that's just been such an amazing run since there. And that, hey, these big money plays, Mike, have been fire. So I'll definitely keep my eye on NEM as well. That's been uh, one of the other favorite gold stocks out there. Uh, with my next play, I'm looking at Meta, and this play is actually to the upside. This was a pretty good move today. There is a good resistance coming up around 485. So I'm looking at this for a move towards that resistance for a test. Uh, the market did very, very well today. I would not be surprised if it continued tomorrow. You can see 485 right here on the book map. That is a very significant level. If this continues to hold above 480 tomorrow and we start to see a good like breakout above like 482.20, 482.50, and we continue to hold higher, I will look for that breakout towards 485. Definitely use this as a target, though. That's a pretty solid resistance. All right. Sounds great. Well, let's jump right into today's momentum plays. And with the first one, we have XOM to the upside. Exxon Mobil, they did very well today. Go ahead and make them break above 118.90. All right. With the next one, we have DraftKings also to the upside. This one was fire today. I love this with DraftKings, Mike. If they could break above 46.30 tomorrow, I'll, I'll keep eyeing it up. All right, and then with the last one, we have Netflix for both directions. Yeah, so to the upside with Netflix, there's a big resistance in the short term right around the 624 area. If it ends up breaking above there, I'll go ahead and look at some momentum to the upside. If it ends up falling under 608.50, then I'll go ahead and look at possible puts and a possible play down. That 608 to 608.50 support is pretty strong. All right, sounds good. So we have the downside level for puts and we have the upside level for calls with Netflix. Don't forget about the upside level with DraftKings and then the upside level with ExxonMobil. These three stocks are on watch for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. The more consistent and powerful the price action is, the better the setup becomes. If these stocks do not break the levels listed, then do not feel the need to force a setup because it's not there. We want to see strong, 
powerful, consistent price action. So keep uh, these ones on your radar for tomorrow. But let's jump right into today's $304,000 big money trade of the day. And we are looking at ticker symbol PSTG. So it's called uh, Pure Storage, and it is a data storage company that has been uh, booming quite a bit over the past year. The big money got into the 60 strike call options that expire on July 19th of 2024. These uh, options are right at the money. They have, uh, you know, a little bit of time to them, you know, the middle of July, which is a good amount, but it's nothing too crazy. The stock has a lot of momentum right now, and that's great to see. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the price action looks good, and uh, it'll definitely be close on my radar. Man, talk about momentum in the short term. I go out to the weekly chart. This stock has been on the market since like 2015, 2016, and uh, it's done nothing but pretty much go up. It chopped around for the first couple of years it came on, and then lately... It's been loving this big like AI slash semiconductor bubble, right? Uh, we're seeing a nice pop out of many stocks like this. Arm, SMCI, others have like fairly similar charts, like whenever you're starting to scroll out a little bit. But with uh, PSTG, Mike, that is a very interesting one. It's an interesting sector, and I love the way it's breaking out in the short term. I would not be surprised to see a continuation. So I'll keep watching this one. If it starts to break above 60 tomorrow, I think there could be a pretty good entry uh, possibility here. All right. Well, either way, keep a close eye on this one going forward. It's not the biggest big money trade that we've ever seen as it's only around like $304,000, but still the stock is moving in a pretty momentum filled way, but good stuff there. And as we look at the market overall, Tom, I think we're set for another pretty exciting day tomorrow. The market has been pretty action-packed this week. Obviously, it made new all-time highs today, but especially as we uh, look at all of the craziness that happened with GameStop, AMC, and all the other events throughout the week, it has definitely been uh, pretty exciting. But um, just because the market has been exciting, that doesn't necessarily always mean it's a good thing. You have to trade in a smart way. And, you know, if you're just someone who's loading up on out of the money options, hoping for the next mega short squeeze, um, that's a tough game to play. So I think going into tomorrow, let's uh, try and trade in a smart way, have stop losses in place. And as always follow the money, be very careful. Uh, you could say buying options with any of these hyped up short squeeze stocks right now, because they are very expensive and, uh, it's a tough game to play. It really is, Mike, and whenever I, th whenever I think about these stocks, I really start to feel bad sometimes because a lot of people, you know, get very humbled whenever these stocks start to drop, uh, you know, especially 60% in the course of two days. So uh, definitely, you know, if you guys are getting humbled right now, you know, don't feel too bad. Just use this as a nice learning scenario. Of course, uh, going forward, you know, you can always try to find better strategies out there. So, you know, keep your heads high, uh, just trade smart. And yeah, let's have a great rest of the week, Mike. Don't forget about those earnings tomorrow morning with Baidu and JD. That should bring some volatility into the China stocks. And that might be a pretty fun sector for the next week or so if we do start to see a pretty good move there. Yeah, like obviously without having the knowledge of uh, what pre-market will look like, I think the China stocks will be uh, some of the most exciting stocks for tomorrow. Like you said, Baidu, JD, Alibaba, and some other ones are going to be worth watching closely, not just because of the earnings for tomorrow, but also just due to the fact of the recent movement that they've had. They've been uh, moving to the upside in a pretty strong way, and you know, as long as the, uh, you know, if the earnings come in good, that could kind of like add more fuel to the fire, but at the same time, if they if they come in bad, that can definitely uh, uh, stop the momentum quite a bit. So keep a close eye on these stocks for tomorrow. And uh, let's before we close out, I want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, Bandit, in the Stocked Up Discord. We can see they made a great post in the Profits channel today with GDX. So awesome job there and a huge shout out to you. And thanks for being a great member of the community. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, consider demolishing that subscribe button to get our videos recommended to you more often. We post all the time and cover everything you need to know about the markets, whether it be early Earnings, important economic data reports, charts you won't find anywhere else, or just other useful, important information. So consider joining the Stocked Up crew by subscribing. And besides that, guys, let's have a great rest of the week.